Okay, welcome everybody. Hope you can hear me. Thanks so much for joining me. Obviously difficult times with the virus, so uh, I thought we'd be cool to do a workshop, do some painting online, let everyone follow along and uh, we can have some fun. Apologies for any teething issues with uh, the technical view. I really wanted to try and get my palette in so you could see what I'm mixing uh, as I'm going. Um, but unfortunately, I can't get it in the picture at the moment. Uh, so there it is. We've got um, some Chinese white, sap green, yellow Hansa, uh, cobalt blue. I'm not going to use any of these today. Um, Horizon blue, uh, purple lake, cadmium red, permanent orange. Um, we have yellow ochre. I'm not going to use this brown, Van Dyke brown, ivory black, and a few other of my favorite colors. Uh, most of these are whole bean. This is lavender. This is grey of grey, this is brilliant jaune, this is titanium buff, uh, and this is a neutral tint. Um, again, I do use other colours, but I'm finding Holbein to be the best at the moment. Um, really enjoying using their paints, they're fantastic. Um, so I'll try and talk you through what I'm mixing. Unfortunately, I can't show you the palette at, at the same time. I have a few last minute confirm requests. Okay, cool. So Hopefully you should all have that picture in front of you that we're going to use. Uh, and hopefully you can all hear me. Um, if you can hear me, uh, just send me a message to make sure I know that it's getting through okay. Cool, thanks Margaret, fantastic. Okay, cool, so, again, thanks for coming along. Uh, I grew up doing a lot of drawing. Uh, I stopped drawing and painting when I was about 16 and, and got into football more and started a career in coaching. And then just about three years ago, I started painting again. I've really enjoyed it, getting back to it. And I, I've really enjoyed just looking at how different people, uh, the techniques they use and stealing borrowing different techniques and coming up with my own style and that that's still a work in progress so yep yeah, I think it's really important to have fun experiment and try new things so hopefully we can uh, we can do that together okay cool so planning our painting uh, I'm gonna sketch this first along with you guys you might have sketched it already at home uh, if you've seen I've, I've taped my paper to the board I used the masking tape that will come off nice and easily after and, and leave a nice clean crisp edge. Uh, I'm using a, just a 2HB pencil, 0.5 millimeter. Uh, I draw quite loose, so there's not gonna be too many crazy straight lines. Any painting, you need your horizon. You've got your foreground, you've got your background. In the moment, we'll have some middle ground. Uh, if you can try and do the big shapes first, that normally helps, because if you haven't got anything right, you can go back in again and uh, fiddle around with it. I'm already gonna move this building over a little bit to leave a bit more space on the other side. And again, just these big shapes first and we'll, we'll figure out the, the other bits afterwards. So here's that building coming in on the other side. Just heads down. And a little building in the distance. <laughs> Once you've done these big shapes, you can fiddle around with it. I'm just going to get rid of that line there quickly. It's going to be in the way. These lovely roofs with lots of detail in on this side. And then we've got this roof that goes around the corner here. 
I love these kind of awnings that come out from the roofs in Italy. It's fantastic. There's lots of detail up here. Sometimes roofs can be a bit roaring. This one, there's a lot going on. So I'm not going to include everything. In the picture, there's lots of aerials up here. Uh, and those aerials do give it a bit of character, but I'm not going to put all of them on. If you've been to Rome, there's, you can see lots of things on the roofs, and that uh, gives it a lot of character. Okay, so they're probably our main big shapes. put some windows in here it's going to draw some lines just to make sure they're not completely off off balance of each other am I going to paint it exactly how it looks in this picture probably not uh, I'm going to tweak a few things change it round and again that's part of our uh, artistic license when we're planning a, a painting can we actually uh, can we make sure it looks compositionally good? We don't have to paint it exactly how it is. Okay, we've got these shutters here. It's a bit of a taller window. When you're drawing, if you draw nice and loose, it's uh, a lot easier when it comes to the painting. If you know what's there, it's good. Uh, but if you draw too tight and your, your lines are exactly straight, then you, you're gonna paint within those lines and be a bit too tied down to what you've drawn. I'll sometimes put these lines in just to make sure I'm getting the perspective right. And I'll go back and just look at the lines. Does the perspective look right? Does it fit in? If it does, I'll go ahead. If not, I'll eliminate some lines just to make sure I've got my, my guidelines and my bearings. This building's gonna kind of fade into the distance, so there's not gonna be a ton of detail in this, uh, but I want it to look right. It's going to be windows fading into the distance. As I'm doing these, painting these windows, we'll put a little bit more detail in. Some window sills, some overhangs on the top. Sometimes take too long with my drawing, so uh, I'm going to try and hurry it up for you guys so you don't get bored. Hmm. And I've started painting already. We have a nice big black dollop of paint over here. I had no idea. I tucked my palette in a lot closer so you guys could see it. And uh, create this wonderful black smudge across the bottom already. And we're just gonna work with it. And this is a great thing about watercolor. <laughs> if you make a mistake, sometimes it turns out to be a good thing. We will see, only time will tell. I was hoping to put a shadow across there anyway, so let's hope that's a good thing. Excellent, that's hilarious. Okay, a few more windows. Let's not kill this with windows. These windows here are funny. We don't see a lot of these in... Uh, in Rome, these round ones at the top, and uh, it's not very characteristic of Rome, but we'll uh, 
We'll put it in for now and we'll see how it goes. this nice big uh, canopy over here and even though there's people walking around I'm actually going to put some people uh, sitting down having a nice meal a few tables a few chairs put some canopies in that over here it's true to the painting the ones in the photo are a little bit higher I'm gonna try and keep them at the same height and almost fade them off just gonna put one extra one in here into the alleyway we've got a little building down the alleyway and there is a tree in there I'm not sure if I'm gonna put in tree we'll see okay foregrounds backgrounds and now we're just starting on our middle grounds so we've done these few uh, canopy umbrellas just gonna put a few people in the foreground now I like this guy here I think he kind of breaks the uh, the gap between the foreground and the background that's nice there's a, a couple there just walking through I'm going to change this already because I want to try and keep a lot of the heads almost at the same height just so that everyone is in the same eye line so here's that guy there's the lady he's walking with and here's another person walking through And then we've got a couple of people here. I think we're going to put these in. They're kind of side on, but I'm going to have them walking towards us. And I'm already taking way too long with this drawing, so I'm going to just put lots of random people in here sitting down under these canopies enjoying a coffee okay <laughs> look at this I can't wait to see what I can do with this fantastic okay have a coffee, bon appetit. I am solar powered and caffeine powered. And let's start with the sky. I'm just gonna use two brushes today. I'm gonna to use a, a sable with a fine point for a bit of detail. I'll use these for the people, for the shutters, for the details on the roof, aerials, windows, and a few bits of filling in. Uh, I'm going to use this Holbein uh, Black Sable uh, brush here. It's a small mop uh, for a piece this size. You don't need too much bigger. Uh, and we'll, we'll go for this and we'll use uh, this for the sky, the walls, uh, and some of the foreground as well. Okay, so let's get going. I'm just going to mix a bit of grey here for a few clouds. So I'm going to use a, a little bit of grey of grey, a little bit of neutral tint. And I'm going to load the brush up so it's nice and wet, not too deep at the moment. And we can just put this sky in, just give the sky a little bit of character. Then I'm going to get some cobalt blue, not too deep at all again. I'm going to mix it 
So it's very weak. And then if it's too strong, I can just come out. Or if it's too weak, I can make it a little bit deeper. It's no problem. Now here I'm going to go over the edges of the roof because I'm going to come in and dry brush that back in. It's just going to fade off and get a bit weaker as we come down here. I don't want to overlap too much here on this wall because there's going to be a bit of a contrast with the colour. But here I don't mind too much. Okay. Well, that's still wet. I'm going to start thinking about the walls here. Uh, you can see in the picture, it's a nice warm kind of yellow ochre. So I'm going to use yellow ochre, which I'll just show my pan quickly. If you're using pans rather than paint that you've put in, you might just want to squirt some water. So I have an atomizer here. You might just want to squirt some water on the pans just to give them a bit of life so they're not too dry. So we're going to use some yellow ochre, a little bit of grey, and a little bit of warmth from this red as well. And just kind of get this colour. Again, we won't go in too deep to begin with. I'm going to use the, uh, the mop brush to begin with as well. And to begin with, because this is still wet here, I'm going to go into the roof first. So I'm actually going to keep that little wash I've got going of yellow ochre. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of uh, a Van Dyke brown. And because this paper's still a bit wet with the sky, if we're lucky, it may actually just fade off a little bit into the sky and give it a really nice blend. Little test. And there we go. Don't mind this at all. Make this bit of little here a bit darker as it's coming around the corner and we can go in and fiddle with that a bit later on as well okay now let's go back to this wash that we have of this yellow ochre again we want it to be warm but we don't want it to uh, to be too strong in terms of tone I'm not going to push my brush too far onto the paper. I want to drag it lightly just so I, if I'm using a textured paper, I can leave these little highlights here. If I like them, I can keep them. If I don't like them, I can just go over them and get rid of them. I really want to see if I can blend this yellow ochre into this brown so there's not too many straight lines. And here's the great thing about watercolor. We're just gonna let it run in. What's gonna happen? I don't know. It's kind of a controlled run, but it's gonna have a mind of its own, which I don't mind at all. Okay, let's get to work here. I'm gonna leave a bit of white on these windows, not too much all the way around. I'm also going to come back into this this wash before it dries as well and to keep it alive I'm going to use this atomizer 
it's a very fine mist spray so it's not going to spray a jet just a little bit of water just to keep it alive and with watercolor keeping that paint wet on the paper means you can go back in and uh, and do all kinds of things as soon as it dries there's not much you can do to it after other than dry brush on it that actual bit of paint is normally done I'm gonna try and leave this edge here next to the uh, canopy and come down here now as I come down I can actually start to get this a little bit deeper in its color so I've just added a little bit of permanent orange into this wash comes down here starts to get a little bit darker in its color and texture and tone great thing about this whole bean brush it holds a lot of water so if I'm using it for these big washes it's great but also because of the fine point even though it's holding a lot of water I can go in and just create these little details around the figures just so I don't get caught with any uh, poor shapes okay I think well, this color is very flat here so uh, I'm gonna get a bit of white just see if we can give this a little bit more character so it's not too flat or one color. Let's give this just a bit more warmth here. Okay. Now, come on to the building on the left now I would normally work left to right because I'm right-handed that way my hand doesn't drag <laughs> across the paper <laughs> like it does here however this should be fairly dry now so I'm gonna use my sable again I'm gonna go in and use some Van Dyke Brown now I'm going to show you my palette I'm literally going to use the Van Dyke Brown out of the tube almost maybe mix it with a little bit of water but it's going to be almost quite a thick paint i'm going to hold the brush at an angle so the bottom of the brush here will be at the top of the roof and hopefully what that will do will create a bit more of a dry brush effect across the roof so very much a broken line which i like so if you can see there's this broken line above the top of the roof makes it a little bit more vague I'm gonna do the same here I'd like to do the same with the next bit but it's going off into the distance I don't want it to be so dark so I'm just gonna use a lighter brown almost a burnt sienna and I'm gonna do the same here We'll see how that goes. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna load up the bottom of this brush stroke with the same color, but with a lot more water. Uh, and you'll see why that will be in a minute. So I just wanna load this up with a lot of water. So I'm putting in the same color, but it's not a dry brush stroke. It's a lot of wetness and a lot of pigment. But hopefully, will blend in now I'm gonna go back to that original mix that I was using here of this pale yellow ochre it's a very similar uh, color tone to what's on this building on the side I'm just 
going to mix some more of this yellow ochre, make it a little bit more pale. Now, I'm going to hold the brush right at the top here because I want this to be really loose for these windows. And here's the good bit. I'm going to really load it up and I'm going to connect the yellow ochre with this Van Dyke brown. Now I don't want to get too much brown on the brush, but I just want it to mix in and fade in with this pigment here. If you can see it mixing already. Gives it a nice blurred line blending in. And now I'll just carry on with these bits here. Again, this is really rough. I just want to make sure that I'm uh, cutting these canopies out. Keep the whiteness of the page. Again, we just want to give this color a bit more character here. I'm just going to give it a spray. Just a little bit more warmth on here. Now, I don't want to leave these windows too blocky, so uh, I'm going to get some almost transparent white and just blend this in a bit more. Sometimes I look back and uh, see a lot of straight lines in my painting, which I don't like. Try and eliminate some of them and we'll, we'll see how it looks. Okay, I'm just going to fade this building off into the background so a nice light, lighter brown just to give it a sense of distance. See it? Something you have to remember of watercolour as well is uh, as you put it on the page, sometimes it might look very dark and then uh, as it dries, it uh, loses its. Uh, darkness and gets quite light so uh, you have to experiment a little bit I'm not going to put that tree in I'm just going to leave this lovely uh, yellow ochre kind of buildings in there okay I'm going to keep working on the top of this I'm not going to touch the middle ground or, or the foreground just yet I'm going to go back in now and uh, this has really bled a lot. It's bled a bit more than what I thought it was, but I don't care. It gives it a nice uh, sunny day blurred look. And uh, I want to go in with a different brown. I want to try and make it a bit darker, a bit more burgundy. So I'm going to put a bit of purple lake in with some Van Dyke brown. Just do a little test, see how this looks. Okay, yeah, I like it. This is the uh, that really nice bit of roof coming around the back here. So I'm just going to do here, while it's bleeding in, I'm just going to use my nail. I'm just going to make some marks. Just you have those little uh, struts that come out from under the roof. Do them a little bit smaller here. Just a little touch of something uh, a bit different. Okay, let's come back to this. I 
again, there's so much up on uh, this roof here. I love it. I don't want to get bugged down with too many brush strokes though. Again, I'm now going to try and use the fine point if I can. I'm going to put my little finger down to keep the distance of the paper. I just want to see if I can use just the tip of this brush to get a little bit of detail. And there's so many aerials and things here. Don't have to be straight. Don't have to go all the way down. Just give a little hint of what's there. There's all kinds of things up here. Okay. Windows. Again, we, we don't have to paint every single window, every single window sill. Just want to give a, a suggestion or a hint of what's there. So uh, I'm using quite thick paint here that I've mixed. It's mostly Van Dyke Brown and, and still a bit of uh, purple. I'm just going to use the tip of the brush just to give an idea of window seals, top of the window. I could spend all day doing this if I'm not careful, and that's not a good thing. It's going to be a shadow coming in here, so uh, I am going to paint these bits in but eventually they'll be washed over with a bit of shadow they will register but uh, not as much as uh, it will against the white paper and nice big dry brush stroke there's all kinds of bits up here Okay, now we're gonna do these shutters. These shutters are a really nice green. It's quite a dark green and I, I don't want it to be too bright. Um, so I really wanna get this color right. I want it to be a, a dark green, but not too, uh, too dark like it actually is. So uh, I've mixed a little bit of sap green with some Van Dyke Brown, a little test. Okay, that's not bad. I'm just going to use the probably the top third of the brush here. If I push down further, it will make the shutter wider. If I use just the tip, it will make it too narrow. So I just want to apply the right amount of pressure to make it wide. And then it's the speed that I drag it. If I drag it down very slowly, then the paint will become down very evenly, which you might want now and then. If you drag it quickly, and you get this really loose, dry brush effect, which uh, I like, it's very vague. And again, just a, a hint or a, an idea of what's there suffices. Now, while this brown and green is still wet, let's uh, have a bit of fun. I'm just gonna just put clean water on my brush. I'm just going to drop some clean water in here and let's see what happens. It's quite a lot. Maybe I add a little bit of white to it. And we just break up the monotony here of these windows. Again, this Van Dyke brown here is just still a bit wet. So I've just got some water on my brush. It's all I've got. I'm going to brush just underneath and then I'm going to connect it and as you can see it will just run in to that paint to the water sorry now as it's run into the water it starts to well up and get quite big and if I don't mop it it will leave a line which I don't want so I just like to see the blend but I want to try and make sure it's still that edge kind of fades 
a little bit. So there's going to be a lot of water come down here under this shutter and a lot of pigment, but it's okay. We'll just mop it. Okay, moving across. So probably just about halfway through now. I'm probably taking longer than what I wanted. I'm talking too much and fiddling around. I just need to get on with it. Now we've got these windows up here and there's a lot of details in these windows. Uh, and if they were bigger, it would be really good fun to spend a bit more time on it, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna get a bit of gray and gray and some neutral tint. I'm just gonna put in a few little squares, just one dab for each window. Very loose. And same here. Then just a little bit of clean water. Just so the squares almost link with a bit of water. And we'll see how that looks. Just gonna do these shutters here. Again, these will be in the shadows. So I'm not too worried about them. Okay, now we'll go back to this left hand side. For the windows that are fading into the distance, we're just gonna use again, same as what we used here on the roofs. So mostly Van Dyke Brown. Uh, and I, I wanna try and mix these colors up a bit. So I'm, I'm gonna use a little bit of Purple Lake as well. Make it a bit burgundy, a little bit of red, a little bit of black. And uh, we'll see how it looks. Apologies, I'm not able to uh, answer all your questions at the moment while I'm painting. I think after I've done this top bit, I'll just go back through and see if you've uh, uh, got any questions. Um, it might be that most of the questions I'll be answering afterwards. Um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's go in with these windows here. Again, we just wanna give a hint of a window. It might be a little uh, window ledge, top of a window. And that's it. I can just barely see my guidelines in here, the pencil, which is great. Still gives me my perspective. I'm just using my little finger to give me a bit of balance. Try and make sure your finger's clean. I put a bit of brown in there already, but I don't care. It's part of the painting. We'll turn that into a, a bird or something. Whenever a paint used to go somewhere I didn't want it to, I, I used to freak out and think I've ruined it sometimes a bit too much of a perfectionist and uh, now I've just learned to uh, make the most of it. Maybe it will turn into something uh, something better than what I was actually planning. Again, this is almost, almost pure pigment, but nice, fast, loose brush strokes for these windows here. I don't want to do every single window the same. There's a lot of windows and uh, if I do them all exactly the same, it's a little bit boring. So um, just mix it up a little bit. Not just the shapes, but uh, also the consistency of the paint. A lot of straight lines here, so I'm just gonna get a bit of clean water. Just break this up a bit. and we'll see what happens.
Again, I want to be careful not to go into these, uh, these big canopies here. a lighter brown here for some of these windows here in the distance we'll fade that up a bit okay I'm just gonna take a little break to go through uh, some of your questions um, you might not have any you might be bored and have gone to sleep um, but uh, I'll just take a few minutes here so grab yourself a coffee have a little chill and uh, I'll just read for your questions quickly. This is great, nice to see so many people joining in. Italians, Italians, people from France, Paris, Portugal. Fantastic. Madrid, Brazil, Brazil, very, uh, very early in the morning in Brazil. <laughs> Thanks, Nikki. I'll try not to, not try not to drop it. Joe, I'll upload this to, to YouTube later on. So if you get a chance to paint, uh, you can watch it again. Same with you, Isabel. No problem. I'll uh, I'll put it onto to YouTube later. Thanks, Isabel. Windows are good fun. Portugal, <laughs> Joe in Enfield. Yes, love it. Just around the corner from me. Fantastic. Right, well done. Up early in the US. Great to have you on board. Again, I just want to highlight these. Uh, these amazing whole bean paints, these are some of my favourites. Uh, when we do people later on, I'll be using lavender, uh, horizon blue, grey of grey, using them straight out the tube. Uh, titanium white for a few highlights. Uh, again, they're fantastic paints. If you get a chance to, to grab some, um, I highly, highly recommend them. Good, Roberto, let's have a look. So R Roberto's just put, I know she has many similar colors like lamp black and neutral tint but also June brilliant and buff titanium can I ask you if there's a special reason or how you use them so apart from the uh the June brilliant and the titanium uh and the uh the horizon blue and the lavender again they're very opaque uh so the pigment is very dense uh it dries very quickly uh, and it's not very transparent. So I, I like using them for figures in the foreground. Uh, and I'll show you a bit later on how I use them right out the tube. Emily, greetings from Hong Kong. Thanks. Mark in Toronto. Fantastic. Boston, Florence. This is just fantastic. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so excited with how many people have joined in. I uh, didn't know how many to expect. But I can tell you it's certainly a lot more than, uh, than what I expected. Okay, cool. We've got 15 minutes left, and um, we, we, we've done a lot of the work. I, I really want to get into the uh, the mid-ground now before I go into the foreground and sort out this uh, this black mess here, which would be really interesting. Okay, so clean brush. I'm just going to wet the bottom of the canopy. Probably not going to put too much shadow on these canopies. Uh, definitely this one will have a shadow coming across it and these ones uh, I, I don't know yet we'll, we'll see okay we'll stay with the top want a shadow coming across here the shadow of the building hitting this building here and coming down then we'll do the mid ground and we'll, we'll finish with the uh, the foreground or we'll, we'll do a little bit of that at the same time so we need to mix a shadow I'm going to use mostly neutral tint again the good thing with watercolor is if you come in a bit too weak 
in terms of the tone of your color, it's easy to correct it and come in stronger on top of it. If you come in too strong, sometimes it can be difficult to, uh, to wash it out and make it lighter. I don't want this to be too of a flat gray. I want it to have a little bit of color and character in it. So you might see some browns in the gray. You might see a bit of purple as well. And we'll see how it goes. Also, the shadow coming across, I don't want it to be too straight. I want it to be a little bit broken and maybe a little soft edge as well. So to create a soft or a little broken line, I'm just going to put a bit of water here, clean water. And this will just soften that edge just in the middle. So loading up my brush, brush got a lot of pigment on here and we're just going to come across. And this is just a shadow coming down. And you can see it's kind of a bit of a broken line here. Here it's turned into a really soft line which hit the water. I just wanted to keep its darkness. And then I don't want this line here to be too straight. I want it to finish here. So I'm going to start here. And we're just going to get a few different lines here as we come across. Okay. I kind of like the color, the tone. So you can come down the painting. That's very gray. So I'm just going to add a little bit of purple into this gray. We can just liven this up with some slightly different tones. I also don't want to cover every single bit of paper with a shadow. So I want to do a few dry brush strokes in here, even though it's very wet. I'm just going to keep the brush moving and we'll see what happens. So I've got these little dots here. I can fill in the ones that I don't want and keep the ones that I do want. Now, Again, the great thing with the whole bean brush, I can use the point. I can just get around these people. And leave a few thin highlights of bits of light breaking through. Now you can see the shadow coming through because I've put the water down. It wasn't my intention. It's happened. I didn't want it to happen, but it's happened. I don't care. I'm not going to worry about it. And uh, I'll, I'll figure it out later on. It looks fairly dark on the paper right now, but it will get darker. So I do want to come in with a bit more darkness. Again, it looks a bit dark at the moment, but it will probably uh, soften up later on. I want to keep the soft edge in this shadow. So I'm just going to use a bit of tissue because I put in maybe a bit too much water and we'll see how that goes. Okay, the doorway. I'm going to come in with a bit more darker neutral tint here. Again, it's a dark doorway in the picture anyway. But now it's going to be uh, in a bit more of a shadow that we've created just to give it a little bit more atmosphere. I'm gonna go around these people if I can. I'm not too bothered. If I go over, I can figure it out. I just wanna leave a few highlights here on the top of the door. Okay, now I've lost a lot of, lot of detail in here that I've painted in and now it just looks uh, a bit more like a shadow. So I am gonna go in a little bit Just a bit of dark neutral tint. I have to remember that it's wet. So if I go in and it's too wet, it, it will blot. It will leave a, a strange edge to it where it's almost it's too wet going into to paper that's too wet. So 
we'll paint and hope and uh, pray for the best and we'll see what happens okay now we've got this lovely shadow coming across we've now got to think about the light that will be hitting the back of this building and reflecting onto here so we're going to use that same mix and we're going to make sure that it's hitting that building here a little edge of the roof to break it up and coming across here Again, I want to try and just leave just a few little highlights so I'm not going to flat paint it flat all the way across and this is quite a harsh edge here even though it's fading into the distance so uh, I might soften it I'm going to clean out a brush in some clean water I'm going to take a lot of the water off. I'm just going to try and soften this edge just a bit. Maybe a bit here as well. Just break that edge a bit. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to try and step the speed up a bit. I'm terrible at doing this. I fiddle way too much. Even when I'm painting at my own speed. You guys have got things to do, I'm sure, and children to feed and jobs to get back to at home. I'm leaving a bit too many gaps here. I want to retain the shape of these canopies and the shadow. Now, I want to fade this shadow off into the distance. So I'm going to use some clean water. So hopefully this shadow will almost bleed up a little bit here. There we go. And this will just give it a bit of distance. And we really don't want this to be too vivid. It's in the distance. And uh, there'll be people in front of it after. I've kind of lost these windows here. It's probably going to be too wet, but we'll, uh, we'll do it anyway. I just want to tidy this edge up here. Okay. Now, again, <laughs> what I did a bit too early last time, clean water at the bottom. Just gonna put a bit of white paint at the bottom. And uh, I'm using a titanium white here, which is a bit more opaque. You can use Chinese white as well. And this will just bleed into the, the shadow we've got here underneath these umbrellas. So I'm gonna use a similar to wash uh, to what we just did with the wall, but I'm just gonna make it a bit darker as it's underneath the canopy. I'm gonna try and mix a lot of it so we can get the same consistency underneath these umbrellas as we can over here. And uh, maybe it won't work out, but uh, we'll see. So you can probably just start seeing the white just bleeding in. Maybe the uh, bits bleeding up. And we've got all these people underneath here. So I'm just going to leave as much space as I need to for these. Again, I don't want it to be too flat. Um, so we will put a bit more, a uh, few different tones in. We'll just mix this bit of brown in here with this gray. Put 
purples maybe made it a bit too uh, of a warm tone. Okay, I'm going to go across this other one now. This is bleeding up a lot. It's the uh, shadow from the top coming down. So if ever you need to blot anything out, try and make the tissue the shape of what you want to blot out. I don't do it a lot. Well, actually I do. <laughs> um, never rub, just hold, press and release. And that will soak up the water without smudging it too much. And then you just go back in and make a little correction if you need to. Okay. Now, I didn't want this to fade in and I wanted to leave a nice white, big white shadow coming across a white um, kind of light hitting the top of this canopy. But uh, it hasn't worked out and this is here and we just roll with it. And let's see what happens. I think I'm gonna try and just blend it in here. And then we'll have a bit more of a shadow coming down the other side. So let's put some white on here. This is all going to run in. I think this one's going to look really messy, but it's in the shadow, so I don't care. Let's see what happens. We're going to try and mix this in here while it's still wet. This is very dark at the moment. I just want it to bleed in just a little bit. Okay. Get an outline of a few people here again. This is in the shadow, so I'm probably fiddling and fussing a bit too much. I just want to come in a bit darker. I probably put a bit too much white in here underneath. I want this to be the same color if I can. same tones so I'll put a bit more brown of the wall into it and maybe it won't work maybe it will we'll see maybe we'll just give this a bit more shadow coming across here just leaving a few little highlights If there's one thing I'm sure of, it's that your uh, canopies will be a lot better than mine. While oh, this is wet, let's break up this uh, boring background. Let's see what happens. Okay. I want to do a bit more of the middle ground now with the people. Before I do that, I'm going to come in underneath just with a, a flat wash. Um, of this foreground here. Um, this is probably the biggest flat wash we'll do um, in terms of just keeping it a similar color. So I'm just gonna use a slightly bigger mop brush. This is an 18 and uh, we're gonna wait for this to dry afterwards so we can put the shadow across. So we're not gonna do the shadow at the same time. So I'm just gonna use some gray of gray. I'm gonna mix this now. Um, I want it to register. It's going to be a bit darker at the bottom than what it is at the top. And who knows what's going to happen with this black. Just a quick test. Okay. If I can, I can try and link a little bit of the uh, the background with the foreground here. The middle ground, sorry. And then our, hopefully our characters uh, in between will fill in the gaps. Okay.
And this looks silly here, this brown. I thought I'd try and get it the same color as the building, but I'm actually gonna bring in this darkness underneath. Let me go down the page. I'll try and get some light coming through this way. Just as we go down, this black here <laughs> will make it darker. So, uh, big mistake with my elbow, and we're just going to mix it in and see what happens. I am going to use the hairdryer now. I don't use it all the time, um, but we're rapidly getting on to uh, two o'clock. If you've got a hairdryer, go ahead and use it. If you haven't, um, I'd certainly suggest um, letting this dry before you go in to do the people. Uh, so we'll just give this a 60 second hairdryer. If you've got one, go ahead and use it. If you haven't, don't worry, just keep watching and, uh, and follow on later. Didn't realize the camera had uh, had a bit of a mind of its own here. Let's see if I can straighten this up for you guys. Okay, hopefully that's better. Sorry about that. Good, I hope that's looking okay. Cool, okay. People, shadows finished. Uh, gonna start with the faces first. So, I'm gonna use uh, any color I want to get to uh, a nice skin pigment. Sometimes if it's very bright, I'll use um, Jean Brilliant. If it's a bit sunny, here today might make them a bit more pink flesh color so I'm mixing some very thick pink skin flesh color and we'll just go in and get a few people here in the sunlight just quick brush smokes Now the top of these people, they're going to be in the sunlight. The bottom of the people are going to be in the shadows. So we're going to do these people first. I've done all their heads. Now, we're going to go in with some nice bright colors. So some whole bean horizon blue. Going to use a few different colors here. Got a bit of water on my brush. I'm literally going to use it straight out of the brush. So out the... Uh, the tube, sorry. This guy's got a hoodie on, but we'll uh, we'll turn him into blue, and we'll have uh, one more blue person here uh, in the restaurant. Maybe someone just here. A bit of blue there. So we'll just dot a few bits around, and we'll do the same with lavender. 
So lavender, straight out of the tube. Slightly wet brush. These people walking through here. Again, I've kind of skipped explaining while I'm doing everything. Um, and in future workshops, uh, I'd really like to go into a bit more depth with uh, why we do what we do and different techniques, um, different consistency of, of paint and pigment, um, different wetness of, of the paper, different wetness of the paint. Um, so that, that's something I'd really like to do uh, next time. If you've enjoyed today, um, I would like to do another workshop if you guys want. So uh, I think uh, probably same time next week if people enjoyed it. It would be really cool to, uh, to paint with you guys again. some lavender or some grey. Just dirty these colours up a bit. a big stroke not exactly how I wanted it but it is what it is and let's get some red in here I really like painting people I don't think I'm very good at it but uh, I like practicing um, so I've done some few studies uh, in the past week where I've just tried to paint as many people as I could uh, just for practice, so if there's something you don't think you're very good at, join the club. Um, practice, practice, practice. It's amazing what you can do with a bit of practice. I hate painting trees, and uh, I had to put a tree in a painting a few days ago, and uh, I painted trees for two days. It's all I painted, and eventually I got a. Uh, a bit happier with how it looked still not 100% happy but uh, it was good fun and hopefully uh, I improved a bit okay so we're getting to the end now this is just gonna run I love it who knows what it is of people here tables and chairs don't have to paint every person perfectly just give an idea of a busy uh, restaurant scene behind okay tables and chairs here there will be a bit of a shadow here as well Just break up these lines a bit okay let's put a shadow in and then we'll finish off uh, the people on the uh, 
the right hand side as well. I'm not used to having my palette so close to my right hand. My my arm is uh, covered in black paint where I've been dragging it across the palette, trying to squeeze everything in really close. Okay, so we're going to almost finish it off now with this uh, shadow coming across the bottom. I'm going to drop in a little bit of this dark shadowy wash here just so we can break it in. And again, I don't want it to be one flat, straight line of a shadow. I want it to be a bit softer here. So I'm just going to put some clean water here to soften the shadow as it comes in. Quick test. Okay, I like it. I want the shadow to break into these people here for can. The corner of a building. And then just really soften into this area here. Oh, I don't like this line, it's too uh too flat and straight. Let's just soften it up a little bit. Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's do the rest of this wash. I can stop uh, messing around. Again, this is a big, big part of the shadow. It's a big wash and it looks very flat at the moment. I want to keep it alive because I don't want it to dry all that one shade or tone. Here's our line mess with my uh, elbow dragging in. It's almost disappeared now, thank goodness. can just kind of uh, dock to that mess, that black paint I had earlier on. Cool, I want to get a little bit of uh, different shades in here as well. And we'll come in and finish these people in just a sec. shadow creep in here behind this building thinking the two okay last part these people in the shadow underneath I'm gonna use a bit of dark paint here a bit of black a bit of neutral tint bit of purple bit of grey grey again it's all in the shadow I just want to make sure it's uh, not too light because it looks very light in here it's gonna dry uh, it's gonna dry even lighter so we just want to put the idea there's some tables and chairs there. A little bit of shadow at the end of this, this building. And I probably left this a bit too long to do this, but it's, uh, it is what it is. Okay, I don't think there's too much, too much else to do really. And uh, if I was taking my time, uh, some things I wouldn't have hurried here. I'm just gonna go in, nice fine tip here. Titanium white from a whole bean. I just wanna give a few highlights 
just the shoulders, tops of heads, just to make sure there's that impression of light coming down. Okay, really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I feel like I went through quite quickly um, and uh, probably things I do a lot differently next time. But I really enjoyed it. It's the, my first time ever doing a, a workshop online, my first kind of live stream. So something out my comfort zone that I've, uh, I've really enjoyed. Um, if you did enjoy it, I'd love to hear from you. If uh, there were things that you liked, it'd be lovely to hear. Um, but what I'd really like to hear is, uh, is things that you think could have been better or different things that you wanted to hear as well. Um, so yeah, please receive any feedback uh, that you guys want to give. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Um, if you'd be interested in, in another free workshop, um, I'd love to do another one next week. We'll, we'll choose a different subject and try and do a few different things during this lockdown. And uh, if you've got any suggestions of things that you'd, uh, you'd like to do, uh, just shoot me a message and let me know and uh, it would be great to hear from you. Um, thanks so much for following along. Um, I've got lots planned while we're in lockdown to, uh, to keep us entertained. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys soon. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, if you've got any questions, please shoot them to me on Facebook uh, or via my Wix page. And uh, I'll do my best to get around to answering all of you. Thanks, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, hopefully we get a chance to paint together soon. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.